Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. This is the brand new Forerunner 745 Multisport watch from Garmin. It is the perfect watch for me, no question about it. But is it a good option for you? Let's find it out together now. So I ordered the 745 on the day of its announcement a couple of weeks ago because I had this feeling that Garmin kind of tailor made this watch for me. It has all the new smart and health features I liked having in the Garmin venue and it kept all the sport and performance related features I love in the 735 XT and 935. And it has even more than that but don't get ahead of ourselves, let's start our review of the 745 with its design. Behind the Gorilla Glass DX lens you can find the transflective memory in pixel display which is the same size as the one in the 945 which is basically a more expensive version of the 745 with better battery life and downloadable maps in a slightly larger and heavier case but we will get back to that later. Thanks to its energy efficient display the 745 can last 4 to 5 days even if you have all the features and sensors turned on. Probably it can last even longer than that if you turn off notifications for example or if you don't use the built-in GPS that much, so the battery life as always depends heavily on your settings, personal preferences and maybe your training schedule as well. For me the combination of the small size, the small weight and the satisfyingly long battery life works pretty well. Garmin achieved the small weight by using plastic all around but the watch is very well built and looks a bit more streamlined and durable than its previous version the 735 XT. But the 745 actually shows more similarity with the 945 including the same 22mm silicon straps, the fiber reinforced polymer bezel and the metal buttons. Talking about buttons, the 745 has 5 of them which makes controlling the watch easy even during a workout or running. The watch has no touch screen but honestly it's better this way. If we turn the watch around we can see the usual 4 pin charging port which is compatible with most Garmin watches and charging cables. On the back there is also the Garmin Elevate heart rate sensor and the Pulse OX sensor but more about these in a second. Now let's have a look at the fancy new features first starting with my favorite, the music player. The 745 supports Deezer, Amazon Music and Spotify so you can download tracks and full playlists to your watch and use them offline or simply just upload your own mp3s to the watch using the Garmin Connect app. Next you have to connect the watch to a pair of Bluetooth headphones or earbuds and you can leave your phone at home or in your gym bag. The music player works fine without any hiccups and it has some basic playback and volume controls. Another feature I would have loved to try is Garmin Pay but my bank does not support it yet so I had no chance to set it up let alone using it. Moving towards the more fitness and health related stuff, there are my two new favorite physiological metrics, the blood oxygen saturation and the body battery. I talked about these two in details in my Garmin venue review, but in short, the Pulse OX sensor on the back of the watch monitors your blood oxygen saturation levels, which gives you an idea of how effectively your body uses oxygen, especially at night when you are sleeping. Then combining this data with other metrics such as heart rate, stress and respiration rate, you can get a good estimation of your body's energy levels which can help you find the perfect time for training or resting. It works pretty good and it tracks very closely with how I actually feel during the day. Another new feature compared to the 735 XT is the incident detection which can send alerts to your emergency contacts in case you have a bike crash or collapse during running. If your wife, girlfriend or mom worries about you while you are out cycling in the middle of nowhere, you can set up live track in the Connect app so they can see where you are at any time during a race or a workout. The safety and tracking features require internet connection, so they only work if you have your phone with you. And as long as the watch is connected to your phone, you can have your smart notifications as usual. Emails, messages, weather forecast, calendar and all these along with your health and training data can be displayed in widgets. You have a list of these widgets with a glance of information, but you can click and enter each widget to see more details about your heart rate or body battery or whatever data you want to have a quick look at. Having these widgets is quite a handy feature of the 745. 
And while we are at handy features, there are the customizable quick controls, which essentially are shortcuts to certain functions, such as a timer or a stopwatch. But what I use the most is the do not disturb switch, simply because I don't like being disturbed sometimes. And now it's time to talk about the good old sport and activity tracking features, because there you can find some interesting updates as well. So the watch has tons of activity profiles from running to yoga, but you can always add your own profile to the list or tweak the presets to your liking as well. You can change data screens and layouts and download or create new ones using the Connect IQ store. You can find and download different structured workouts from the Connect app, and you can also create your own workouts, so there is practically no limit to what you can do here. Of course, there is the multi-sport feature, which is one of the key selling points of this watch. You can do triathlons, duathlons, brick sessions, aquatons, and whatever custom multi-sport craziness you can come up with in your training. Triathletes, including myself, will love and probably use this feature a lot. But let's see a few interesting details about other activity profiles. For example, if you use the strength profile, you have an automatic rep counter and it works quite well most of the time and sometimes it can even recognize which exercise you're doing, but it has its limits. I guess you are better off adding exercises manually or simply create or download a full workout from the Connect app and the watch will guide you through the whole workout step by step and you even get a visual guide of how each exercise is supposed to be done correctly. Next there is the track run profile which gives you a precise calibrated data of your track runs. The first time you run on your favorite track with the watch, just run 4 or 5 laps and tell the watch which lane you are running in so it can calibrate itself and after that you will always have a very precise data of your track runs. You can see on the map how accurate the GPS is on the track. The watch will suggest workouts based on your training status or goals, but you can always ignore that and set up a custom interval training for example if that's what you want to do instead. If the weather is as bad as it's been here in Ireland the last couple of days, then you probably want to run on a treadmill instead and the 745 got you covered. You are supposed to run a couple of times outside first for the watch to get a better idea of your cadence and pace, so after some calibration it can give you a more accurate estimation of your distance and pace on the treadmill. Based on my experience, the watch does an okay job with the distance, but it never gets it 100% right indoors. Fortunately, you can always adjust and save the data manually after every single run if the watch is off by a couple of hundred meters or so. But what the watch does 100% accurately indoors is tracking your pool swims. Thanks to the customizable pool length option, it gets your lap count right all the time. You can lock drills, there is an automatic rest timer, which works ok, and the wrist heart rate monitor finally works underwater. I'm not saying that it is accurate enough in the water, but at least it's an option now. Based on my tests and comparisons with the chest heart rate monitor, the behavior of the heart rate monitor built into the 745 is a bit hectic in the water. On one day it measures a way lower heart rate than it should, and on another day it measures way higher than what the actual value is. And the same goes for open water swimming as well. First of all, yes, the watch tracks open water swimming, and the GPS actually does a pretty good job. It also locks onto a GPS signal quicker and it is more reliable than my 935 which loses signals and gets lost quite easily in the water sometimes. But back to the 745 and its heart rate monitor, it is way off sometimes even though the average heart rate turned out to be exactly the same in this case. But there is a significant difference between the data from the watch and the chest heart rate monitor as you can see here. Back on dry land, I did some further testing while running and cycling to see how accurate the built-in heart rate monitor is. During this 6k run you can see that the average values were close, but the actual gap between the two graphs is bigger than I would like them to be. There is a 10 to 15 beats per minute difference sometimes, which is more than what I consider acceptable. But there is another run where the difference was negligible during the whole time. Cycling is even worse, at least road cycling is. You can see how big the gap is, it's basically useless. However, the GPS based graphs are perfectly aligned, so no problems there. Thanks to the GPS, GLONASS and Galileo support, the satellite tracking is quite accurate regardless of where you are, in the water or on land. However, the elevation data coming from my bike computer seemed to be much more reliable and precise. 
When you hop on your turbo trainer at home, things get a bit better in terms of heart rate as it matches the data from the chest strap pretty well. The watch connects to all sorts of sensors such as cadence and speed sensors as you can see the graphs here and you could get data from power meters as well but I don't have one. And on the note of it would be nice but I don't have one yet, you can also connect your watch to a smart trainer and do all sorts of preloaded or custom workouts. But back to the heart rate monitor for a second, I could bring you a couple of more examples of how accurate or inaccurate it is, but I don't want to get hang up on that. My conclusion here is that even though it can be very accurate sometimes, and actually most of the time it is, if you are doing serious heart rate based training, you better use a chest strap to get more accurate and consistent results. And I guess the key here is consistency or the lack of it. But it's not the 745's fault as it's the case with every single sports watch out there regardless of their price or brand. So far we talked about activity tracking and physiological metrics but with all that training and health data comes a bunch of performance stats. On the 745 you can see and monitor your training status, training load and training effect with an estimated VO2 max and the lactate threshold as well. And there is the blood oxygen saturation along with respiration, stress, body battery, hydration, heart rate and sleep tracking and all this together can paint a pretty detailed picture of how healthy, energized and fit you are and how you should approach your training. Your body battery is low, your resting heart rate is high and so is your training load. In Garmin land it means that you are tired and possibly overtrained, so it might be time to take a day of training. Do some yoga and stretching and get back to your training routine when you see your numbers are improving. Or let's say you feel rested, your stress levels are low and you are ready to do a hard workout. Then what are you doing here watching YouTube? But before you actually go out for a run, let me do a quick recap first. Ok, you're still here. So the Garmin Forerunner 745 as I said it in the intro is the perfect sport watch for me. And I can only hope that based on my evaluation you can now decide whether it suits your everyday fitness needs or not. If you want longer battery life and offline maps, choose the 945, but other than that the 745 does give you all the data you will ever need and more, it's smaller and lighter and it is also $100 or Euros cheaper. If you plan on doing a half Ironman next year or any time in the near future, the watch has more than enough battery life to track your struggles from start to finish, but if you want to do a full distance triathlon, you better make sure you finish before the battery dies, but 15 to 16 hours should be plenty enough for most people to complete an Ironman. And as far as its everyday performance goes, the watch is easy to handle and the menu is well thought out. The buttons, controls, widgets and shortcuts might take a minute or two to get used to, but if you ever used the Garmin watch before, you will feel yourself at home pretty much from the get-go. The Connect app is easy to navigate, it's well designed and it displays all your essential health and performance related data, so that only adds to the appeal of the watch. Garmin didn't really cut too many corners when creating this watch and I have to agree with what the 5k runner said on his blog and that's that the 745 is not really the successor of the 735 XT but much more like a smaller version of the 945. And there you go, these are my thoughts on the Garmin Forerunner 745. I hope you liked the video, if yes then please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. There are some useful links in the description below and probably there will be a few comments there as well sooner or later, so check them out if interested. Thanks for watching, see you next time.